Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, uh, for having me here. Dr. Keeley, Dr. Katzen, Rabbi Albert, uh, it's a great pleasure to share some thoughts with you here today. Um, it's also a great pleasure to attend, actually, later this afternoon, the, the opening of that expansion, because we are very, very proud of having achieved that together. Um, I'd like to discuss today why I believe that new and emerging digital and health technology will give us a tremendous opportunity to reshape the way healthcare is being delivered, but also experienced for people. And we are in a position together where we can leapfrog existing ways with innovative approaches. Of course, the flip side of that is that we will have to disrupt aged old age-old methods, and that may not be comfortable. Let me first frame our discussion with a brief impression of the impact of digitization. It's changing the way the world works, literally. So you may say, what is this here on the screen? Well, the Mail Online is the world's most read English newspaper, but there is no paper. Amazon, the world's most valuable retailer, has no shops. Uber, the world's largest taxi company, has no cars. And Airbnb, the world's largest provider of accommodation, doesn't own any bed, no property. Right? The, the, the thought I'm trying to place in everybody's mind is there's something fundamental going on with a redesign on how things are being implemented and profoundly changing business models. And, of course, this topic of transformation is very much on people's mind. Um, with a growing and aging population, with more chronic disease, cost rising, how do you transform healthcare? Um, recognizing these pressures, um, having to reinvent, uh, let's say, how healthcare is being delivered, but also providing access to the people who don't have maybe access to care right now. There's still a huge disparity in the world um, and we may have to find new ways to deliver care also in emerging markets. And technology will be able to leapfrog um, so that we don't need to recreate what maybe the Western world has in those countries. But around the world there are common themes. And the common themes are, for example, how do we improve accurate first-time right diagnosis, and how can we get to diagnosis faster? And if we talk about cancer, that it is a very applicable and very sensible question, because very often um, that percentage only stands at 30%. Another challenge that I hear all across the world is how can we reduce the huge variance in cost and outcomes within and across health systems? If only we can all be at best practice level, that would already be phenomenally better for the whole world. Thirdly, how can we move acute care patients to less expensive ambulatory or even home and virtual care settings, avoiding that they need to travel, get to expensive real estate buildings, um, and so on. And if we want to avoid expensive acute care, how can we get people, patients, take more ownership themselves of their own health? Accountability for prevention, accountability to avoid aggravation, aggravation of the situation. And of course, eventually, how can this all be um, affordable? How can we keep people healthy? How can we prevent uh, disease to aggravate and become worse? How can we diagnose first time right? How can we treat in such a way that patients can go home the same or the next day um, in a minimally invasive way? And how can we support people with a chronic condition uh, in the, the comfort of their home setting and support it perhaps through telehealth? So we like to visualize healthcare as a holistic continuum, um, whereby care becomes continuous rather than uh, episodic. Healthcare practitioners, I think, will appreciate that this becomes a compelling visualization um, when you think of it as fully integrated and not siloed. And technology and data is going to make that possible. 
and it will have profound impact on how healthcare is organized. First, we, um, we want to make sure that we can engage people in their own health better. And that's where we talk about the personalization of care. An opportunity to use technology um, and to, to make it connected. We connect patients to heart monitors, we connect patients to connected CPAP devices so that we can actually measure their compliance. And we can give feedback and thereby motivate people to take better care of their health. This kind of personalization is changing the way people experience health, disease and health care. And actually I'm talking about the rise of the quantified self uh, as a foundation for improving personal health and well-being. And that's around the corner. Data is key and data sharing actually among care teams and connecting patients to doctors in new ways is critical. A major trend um, in this digital era is that um, we are advancing to precision health with individualized treatment pathways where we have first time right diagnosis, treatment pathways that have the best statistical outcome for success based on reference data, and where um, after discharge, a relationship between the care team and the patient can continue um, to make sure that the impact of the treatment is delivered. And that brings me to the second uh, big trend here. And we, that is where we talk about the innovation of care pathways. Sometimes I also use the word industrialization of care pathways, which is not always popular. But, you know, we need to look at care pathways and their effectiveness, their efficiency, whether they are first time right, take the waste out, take the variance out. That does require, however, um, an integration of all the building blocks of healthcare. That does require that technology is fully interoperable. Uh, it does require that data flows easily along this care pathway. It requires a design of a scalable and repeatable process and seamless workflows. And data will be the toolkit for doctors, but also for administrators, to optimize how care is being delivered. To deliver technology that really works, we are deeply dependent on clinical insights um, and how care is being delivered. And it is such a privilege to work with leading, thought-leading customers like Dr. Katzen, like the Miami, Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute, because it allows us to gain those deep insights on how to develop technology that actually can have a contribution. As we move along the health continuum, I'd like to talk about minimally invasive treatment, which of course very much is the topic also of this afternoon. Providing physicians with precision tools and clinical information can get to further breakthroughs in how patients are being treated, thereby dramatically improving the patient outlook and the speed of rehabilitation. I'd like to highlight the advances that we have made together with the MCVI in image guided therapy. And it's no coincidence that, let's say, I emphasize so much that the advance in technology uh, comes about thanks to the deep collaboration with thought-leading uh, practitioners, uh, because that is how innovation really uh, gets to an impact, not in the technology lab back in our R&D centers. Building partnerships is an essential part of our strategy, and we use a lot the word co-creation. Co-creation of solutions to bring together a different makeup of the care pathway uh, so that we can enable more patient-centric, continuous and connected care. The nature of healthcare is very diverse, very complex, and the pace of digital innovation is very, very rapid. And we can easily lose our way, but by deep collaboration together, let's say hospitals, uh, providers, can navigate all the pitfalls of technology and where we also take accountability, accountability for the success of that implementation. 
We think it's important to align objectives and incentives among stakeholders and where shared risk is being taken in the innovation process so that it be becomes a true collaboration and partnership. And that's very exciting work. In fact, the MCVI has been a partner with Philips for over 30 years. And we have been pushed many times, thank you, Dr. Katze, to advance the envelope and go beyond the horizon. The two organizations have a shared commitment to innovation and excellence, putting patient experience and outcome front and center. In the past decade, MCVI has helped Philips to deliver, to develop, clinically validate industry's first 3D abdominal imaging, also developing the world's first advanced endovascular suites. And the 120 million US dollar expansion at MCVI is actually a state-of-the-art catheter lab that is co-created together. It's the first North American installation of this new platform that was already mentioned, the Azurion. And we believe it's a game changer in cardiovascular care, image guided therapy, offering very advanced integration, an ultra low dose x ray, improved workflow, and patient safety. The project typifies the ambition of Dr. Katzen and his team, ensuring that doctors, patients, and the local community here in Miami continue to benefit from the most cutting edge solutions. And we are very proud of that relationship. But it, the impact will go far beyond Florida. It has a worldwide impact. And I think we need to recognize that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have touched today upon the challenges and opportunities of digital technology in healthcare. And the promise of technology is great. We love it, it's our job. But we should not under, under, underestimate that the technology challenge actually pales in comparison to the change management that will need to take place in order to deliver on this huge promise. Some of the change management can be of technical nature, such as the interconnectivity between departments, uh, making data available, um, but some of the um, Change management is related to the role of caregivers. For example, the, the relationship between the caregiver and the patient may change. Right? Maybe if you had a knee replacement or a hip replacement and you like going back to the doctor every year for a checkup, and if that's done virtually, it affects the relationship. I'd like to, uh, to close by um, re-emphasizing our commitment to improve the lives of 3 billion people by 2025. You may say this is a huge number, it is, but to reassure you today, we touch about 2 billion people every year through our products and services across the world. So we still have one third to go. With, our, with good partnerships, we may get there, but it is exciting. And this staying relevant is made possible by the challenges that we get from our customers. And Dr. Katzen, I offer you and your colleagues my sincere thanks and con congratulations for the outstanding relationship, uh, but also all the challenges that you have given us. MCVI is a medical pioneer and one of Philips' globally most valued con collaborators. I believe that together we are shaping the future of healthcare. And thank you for being part of that journey. Thank you very much.